How's it going everybody, Dato Doi here with another Dragon Ball video for you all today. And in this video, I thought we'd go ahead and break down the next upcoming Dragon Ball game, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Now you might have known about this game for a pretty long time now, originally it went under the working name Dragon Ball Game Project Z. But very recently, thanks to E3, we got the official title revealed as well as a new trailer and then most importantly, 10 plus minutes of gameplay footage with a very good interview of somebody currently attached to the development of the game. And that's a big reason why I'm so excited to be doing this video because originally I was excited for Dragon Ball Project Z. Of course, it was a very good looking Dragon Ball game and we had heard it was going to be an open world-ish RPG. So all of that sounded very good, but I wasn't entirely sold. This footage though is definitely what I needed to see to convince me that this game had a very real chance of becoming something special. So now in this video, I would like to take a few minutes of your time and talk about what exactly in this footage made me think this way. First things first, we should probably address the obvious. The visuals in this game look super clean. Seriously, this game is being developed by CyberConnect2 and it definitely shows. For those of you unaware, CyberConnect2 has previously worked on the Naruto Ninja Storm games and I seriously consider those games to be some of the best ways to experience the Naruto story. Throughout the series, you could definitely see them getting a hold at this art style and really making it into their own, ultimately paying off in one satisfying Naruto vs Sasuke fight that even to this day looks fantastic. The interviewer asking the questions in this footage also made sure to bring up their past work on Naruto and as a response to the question, the person connected to the game basically said, yes, I would like to say that we are pretty experienced in this art style and we made an effort to combine what we did on Naruto Storm with Akira Toriyama's original art style and we came up with this game and it really shows off, dude. The cutscenes and super attacks specifically look amazing, but also some of the expressions they're able to capture are quite good as well. This was one of my favorite shots from the initial trailer. So yeah, I know it's super obvious, visually speaking, the game looks pretty good, but you know, it's something we have to cover, dude. One thing that's a little less obvious if you're only watching watching the E3 trailer and not the footage, is the way that you traverse over the open worldish parts of the gameplay. In this footage, we see all sorts of way Goku can interact with the environments, whether it be riding on Nimbus, flying through objectives that I assume are, are, will act as some sort of currency, dashing along the ground, fast falling from the air. These are all movement options available to you while you're flying through the world. You can also see in the controls listed on the left side of the screen that you also have access to key blasts that you can use throughout the world to interact with objects. One example we got from this footage was when Goku entered a mine, and in order to get the ore, he had to key blast the ore off of walls and the ground and such in order to pick up collectibles. Overall, the movement looks super clean and it's nice to know that they do have incentives to fly more cinematically per se. Without this currency, it would be pretty easy to just make a beeline somewhere uh, and pretty much unceremoniously just fly over the entire map. That said, while it does look like it's in the player's control most of the time, there did seem to be one instance where it kind of took control away and automatically flew the player through a series of rings. And the last thing I want to make sure to stress is the fact that I've been saying open world-ish because apparently this game is not going to be exactly one big open world as the person answering questions made sure to point out. Instead they're going to be like very big zones uh, in which different parts of the story will take place. This makes sense considering a large part of Goku's story takes place on other planets like Namek for example uh, in that gravity chamber etc etc. I don't think this is necessarily too big of a downside for me though because just this area alone where they're going to fight Raditz seems pretty expansive. One thing that I'm super interested to see them tackle is how they're going to spread out activities aside from the main story quest that you can accomplish in each one of these bigger zones. Thankfully they do show some of these activities in this footage itself as well as pulling up the map in a bigger view so that we could see what the icons actually mean. Some of these indicators include the main story, the sub story, the grocer, trader, cook, training grounds, dinosaur habitats, and fishing spots. Now again theoretically those are only things that you will find here in this big rabbit zone uh, sort of thing. So my question with be when Goku goes to Namek, will these zones just be repeated on Namek or will they be more unique over there? That way the players have reasons to sort of backtrack and go back to other areas and grind and pick up materials and things of that sort. Speaking of going back to areas to grind and pick up materials, this game is an RPG experience for Dragon Ball fans. You have things like support characters like Piccolo following you around here and helping you in the battle with Raditz, as well as health bars for both of your characters and an experience gauge to determine when you're going to level up and receive that next power boost. I brought up grinding and material gathering because to me those are two core aspects of what makes an RPG fun. Uh, you know sometimes the bosses have to be hard so that you can go back and feel like you're making meaningful progression. Thankfully although we only got 10 short minutes of footage it does seem like there's going to be some interesting mechanics in terms of this with this game. The developer said it best when he said normally in RPGs food is mainly used for recovering your health but it has a much wider effect in this game. You could actually see hints of this in this footage itself when Goku heads down to a fishing spot 
pulls this random tail out of nowhere and gets a fish, and then goes to a campfire and heals up Piccolo, and then later on while flying to Raditz, uses some of the food he got from that fishing spot to increase his stats like strength and health. Overall, that little exchange is what got me the most excited for this game, because it showed that it's not skimping out on any RPG mechanics. They might not be, you know, super hardcore mechanics, but it is nice to know that you will be expected to make decisions on what stats you upgrade and where you go to get material. Now, of course, the main reason you would want to do all this is to improve your skills during the combat sections of the game, which we only get two examples of in this trailer. And thankfully, even though it was very fast in some cases, they did allow us to see pretty much the full breadth of what we can expect the combat in this game to be like. Right away, when Goku enters this battle with a mech soldier, you can see he enters a fight mode, and the controls of the game change significantly. He now has three options, which we can only see two of because uh, we're now watching Dragon Ball, which kind of sucks. He has B fight, which is his normal attacks, and X is still key blast. Now, of course, we won't know until we get the controllers in our hands, but this seems to be the most basic of combat systems. Fight just seems to be one button and Goku does a simple string uh, regardless of what you do. Again, don't have the controller in my hand, so maybe that gets better as the game goes along or there's more depth that I'm just not seeing. But for the most part, you basically get your punch button and key blast. To expand upon that system though, we do have two separate menus you can access by hitting LB for super attacks and RB to access your support. This refers to the character you have brought with you. So in this case, that would be Piccolo and they do it very fast here, but basically in one frame, you can see he pulls up the support menu to call out Piccolo and then immediately uses Y to have Piccolo use explosive wave. From what we can see, Piccolo also has another super move, the Demon flash strike. Uh, we only get to see the explosive wave, but because he does this so early on in the fight, uh, this little robot doesn't stand a chance, gets hit by Piccolo, blown back, uh, and Goku can follow up to finish him off. It's here when we see the second menu super attacks. We can only see, again, a limited amount of them, but we have Y for Kamehameha, and then X for scissors, paper, rock, rock. I assume he has two other options, uh, scissors, paper, scissors, uh, and scissors, paper, paper. I assume anyway. Again, I can't see it either. God, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the combat looks like it flows about as smooth as you can expect. And although it is simple, you have your guard, your step maneuvers, your boost, super boost, burst, and charge key. So pretty much while it is simple and a little bit basic, I think it's totally fine for a more RPG experience. One of the reasons why I think it's okay if the offense does end up being a little bit more basic is because defensively, the game looks like it's actually pretty interesting to be a part of. Uh, we can see this later on in the boss fight with Raditz. Whenever Raditz does his key blast special, uh, it looks like you really have to make sure you're dodging, stepping, pretty much just bobbing and weaving to make sure you don't get hit. Because if you do choose to just basically block the attacks, there is a form of chip damage. So that basically results in if you want to play optimally and you want to take on an opponent that is far more leveled than you, then you could probably still do that, but your defense really needs to be up to snuff. The last tiny thing to talk about in terms of combat seems to be that there are team up sort of attacks. You can see that when Goku and Piccolo team up on this beam uh, to attack Raditz. It doesn't look too intense though, uh, just kind of Piccolo adding on to a, a standard Kamehameha, but it is nice to know that your teammates do help out uh, in team up attacks. But that pretty much concludes it in terms of everything we know about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. And now if you wouldn't mind, I would like to talk a little bit about what we don't know so that people don't uh, get overhyped because as of right now, there is a lot that we just flat out do not know. And it's not even because they didn't talk about it in the interview. The guy asking questions was really trying to pry some of this stuff out, but uh, he just wasn't having it, dude. Two major questions that got dodged that I would love to hear the answer to is, can you play other characters aside from Goku, even though this is the Goku story? And how much of Dragon Ball Z does this game encompass? Because as of right now, we only know for sure that it goes up to the end of the Frieza saga. Neither of these were questions received satisfying answers in my opinion. We just kind of got the I don't want to reveal too much about this game right now, uh, but we did want to focus the story mostly around Goku and the events of Goku and Z. Uh, so that kind of deconfirms anything from Super happening and Dragon Ball happening. Although he did mention that we saw Aider, so Easter eggs would be scattered out throughout some of these worlds, which is a nice touch. The more interesting question though is will you be able to play other characters aside from Goku? Because as the interviewer pointed out, a large part of Goku's story is being incapacitated. There's large portions of the Saiyan saga that Goku has nothing to do with, and for a majority of the Frieza fight, Goku is sitting in a pod. <laughs> So in those situations, will we take over one of the Z-Warriors body and fight from there? 
Uh, in Frieza's case, would we fight as Vegeta or even Krillin for that matter? That would be pretty sick. Or would we just be treated to a cutscene of Goku in a pod? I'm kind of in the camp that while Goku should be the main character for the majority of this game, considering it is named Kakarot, I would also love for portions of the game to have us play as other main protagonists from the series. But that's it guys, that pretty much concludes all of my thoughts and questions about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Uh, again, this video was supposed to tell you why this footage got me so excited, and uh, hopefully it got you excited too. Or uh, maybe if you weren't pleased with what you saw, maybe you saw some things in this video that you were like, hey, you know what, I might actually like that. Or if you were curious about the game and ended up not liking what you saw, uh, I'm glad the video could do that for you as well in some ways. I, I hate for you to pick up a game that you weren't going to be super into. But while you're here, I do want to ask you to share your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. Doesn't have to be positive, doesn't have to be negative, could be anything, you know? I just love talking Dragon Ball with you guys, so I would love to see you go down in the comments and uh, leave some interaction there. While you're down there, if you like the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We do mostly Dragon Ball content here with Dragon Ball Fighters, as well as some other fighting games, uh, but I do want to look to expand more to Dragon Ball as well, like this video right here. You can check out some more of my videos on your screen right now. Other than that, I have been Dato Doya. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.